Hey there everybody, this is Dwayne Ferguson and what I want to do here is show you guys how I use 3D Coat to paint a hard surface model like this airplane here called the Firehawk. This is going to be a model in my upcoming uh, iPhone game called Hamster Vice Roach Wars. So down here, here are some models. This is the Smog King uh, dirigible. This is the Assault Buster Tank and this is the Firehawk all painted inside a 3D coat. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that very quickly. This is the Firehawk, once again, a model that I created in Lightwave. Some of the models, like the Assault Buster, were created in Maya. One of the things that is very helpful when I'm painting is to turn on, through the view menu, wireframe. That way I can see exactly where the borders are and I know where to put the texture. Another thing that I want to do is turn on all of the actual layers that I have here so you can see what the Firehawk looks like once it's all nice and painted. So here it comes, it's like shh, it's going to drop the bombs and blow up the enemy base and all that kinds of cool stuff. Alright, so it's really cool. And uh, alright, so a little secret here. One of the things that I did as well, let me go ahead and close preview, is I went ahead and I went to Photoshop and I started to paint textures that I knew would be easy fits for painting for the different panels of a vehicle. So I created a folder and I have texture panels. So as you can see here, I have a panel for the little warning, don't step on this area part of the plane with rivets and the little arrow. Another secret is always kind of grunge up or dirty up your textures. As you can see, I have scratches everywhere. So it looks like it's actually being used. And the edges are very important. Grunge those up, lighten those up a little bit so that the wear and tear is visible in between the different panels. The big mistake a lot of people make when they do 3D modeling and texturing is everything looks so nice and neat and clean. Well, I, I dare you to take a look around your house right now or even your room or office and tell me exactly what's perfectly clean in there. There's probably dust, and grunge in the cracks, rust somewhere, as you see. So you really want to go and take a look around your house, take a look around your car, look at the wear and tear, and really study it. Okay, so that's the panels. These are the panels that I actually used. And all I did was import them one at a time into 3D Coat by going to Materials. And then I clicked on this little arrow right here to bring that material in. But as you can see, I already have one loaded. So I'm going to hide some of these guys, create a brand new uh, layer, and I'll just double click on it and call it panels. And if you hear any trucks or vehicles outside, uh, just ignore those because uh, I work from a military base. Okay, no I don't. And I'm gonna go to my camera view, right here in my tools, and choose top. And then I'm gonna click on this little box here so I can go through an orthographic projection. It just flattens things out more neatly and it makes it a little easier to paint on things. Now I'm gonna click on this texture and as you can see it shows up in our viewport. And I can click on this little guy here to move those textures around. Now this is pretty massive so I'm gonna scale it down. All you do is click on the magnifying glass and move to the right with your mouse. And I can also rotate by clicking this guy here and once again, moving my mouse to the right to rotate that way or left to rotate to the right. And I'm going to just put the panel right on the wing itself. So I have the warning stripe right there and line it up. What I'm going to do at this point is change my brush. I typically like to paint with this guy here. It just gives you a really hard boom. It's there. It's nice and hard and I don't have any opacity around the edges. Depends on what you're painting. And I'm going to increase the size of my brush and just paint this in. Now because I have it as panels, if I wanted to, I can just keep painting that. And that would have that same texture repeated throughout the entire wing, which is not what I would typically do. That's why I have different panels. So I would simply load a different one. And you can apply it to the depth channel if you want. I'm going to say no. But I do want to apply the new texture to the color. So I'm going to go to my texture file here and I'm going to choose a different one. Let's see if I can get the one with the rivets. 
let's see, where is it? That one. Click open and I'll choose specularity as well. And yet again, I will choose that same texture. Once again, sorry for all the noise back that, that you're hearing in the background, possibly. And now I have the new uh, panel that I could paint. By the way, if seeing the texture distracts you, click hide right here. That way you'll be able to paint the new texture without actually being disturbed by seeing the preview. And then you can move your model around and continue to paint. So what I suggest you do, of course, is uh, choose auto or show or hide so that you can have the texture reappear when you let go of the mouse and then paint again and just continue from there. I'm going to go ahead and rotate my model, put orthographic off, and then go ahead and just get rid of this texture by hitting the X, hit this little cube again, and I'm going to hide my wireframe and I'll zoom in just to show you what that looks like. But I'm going to hide that now and just show you that after you spend a good amount of time painting, what you can expect. So this is how it started off, nothing. And then I did a very, very quick painting with all the panels. It's going to take a couple of passes, guys, so you have to be very patient when you're doing this to make it look great. So as you can see, this is, this is nothing to write home about. So then you add some more stuff. I actually painted in my own shadows, which is sometimes a nice trick if you're going to have a problem with the lighting. So I painted these wings down here darker and I added my own shadows. I even added some uh, flames here and decals. I have some lines and I always have a, a layer called lines or detail lines. And that's where my panels are. So we have the rivets in place. Let me zoom in here. I have another shadow layer and I changed the uh, opacity of this one to multiply so that it would darken everything real nice. And notice the grunge I was talking about. It's all dirty and along the edges we have some wear and tear. I have another layer appropriately called wear, which I literally took a standard layer and I went with a very light brush along every edge to give it a beat up look. Because these things are in battle so they're going to be taking a lot of hits and a lot of tear through just flying around and all that other kinds of good stuff. So this is one more layer that I just painted here. This is the finished Firehawk, and this is going to be what you see in the game. Once again, it's called Roach Wars, Hamster Vice Roach Wars for the iPhone. It'll be coming out sometime, probably in the end of August or September. 